All right, guys, I'm sitting here in my gear room and I was packing up all my gear uh, to get ready for a shoot and I noticed all the different lenses I had. So I asked you guys if you guys wanted to see kind of a review video of all my different lenses, which lenses I liked, what are the pros and cons of each lens, and you guys said yes. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna talk about all these lenses right here. First up, we actually have a brand new lens I just got. This lens is brand new, and the reason I got this lens was to fit in my new underwater housing. The new underwater housing I got, um, the dome bubble port that it comes with, um, the recommended lens for that port was this lens. So the reason for buying this lens was strictly for underwater um, photography and videography. I have not used it yet, but I can already tell by the build quality, it's very sturdy. I really love the metal that it's made out of. It's not plasticky at all. Even the rings, the focus rings are metal. They're not rubbery, so they're gonna be easy to clean. They just feel good in the hand. The focus ring is extremely smooth, like very, very smooth. So I'm excited to test out this lens. I know the autofocus pairs really well with the Sony. Next, sitting on my 5D Mark uh, III right now, we have the 24 to 70 Canon L series f2.8. This is my go-to lens for photography, as well as um, anything kind of handheld with videography, um, you know, and video that I do. I use this lens on my Sony as well, um, but actually mainly use this lens for photography. Another big thing I use this lens for is uh, on my Canon C300 Mark II. This is my go-to lens on the Canon C300 Mark II. It's very sharp. I uh, love the focal range from 24 to 70. Um, again, focus ring is very smooth. The autofocus works extremely well when paired with the Canon C300. Um, it's it just basically an instant autofocus. It's really good. And they actually have a cool little neat function here that you can uh, lock it so you can't your focal range can't change on you um, if you want to lock it off at a certain focal range. Again, this is my go-to lens for photography and when using the Canon C300. Very awesome lens. I think it's pretty much everyone's kind of main go-to lens. I think everyone in their kit has a 24 to 70, whether it's a Canon L series or you know a Nikon or whatever, the 24 to 70 is always a must have in my opinion. Next over here, we have another new lens. Um, I actually have the Metabones adapter attached to it right now because this is the lens that I like to use on my Sony. So this new lens, um, Canon wide angle, 17 to 40, F4. This is a wide angle lens I like to use on my Sony when, run, when running the uh, glide cam. So I'll use this lens um, on my glide cam with my Sony. And as well, I'm using a lens right now which has always been my go-to wide angle which is being used to film this video right now. Um, the lens being used to film this video right now is a Canon 16 to 35. This is a 17 to 40. So very similar lenses, both are F4s. This one doesn't have image stabilization while this lens that I'm using to film this video does. So that's one feature I love about this lens. It's slightly more expensive because of the image stabilization. Um, and this is slightly a, a cheaper lens. But the reason I got this lens is it's actually a little lighter and smaller than the 16 to 35. So it should be easier to balance on my glide cam so again, I have a Canon 17 to 40 F4 and a Canon 16 to 35 F4 with image stabilization. Both are great lenses. Um, this one has been my go-to for a while. I think this one's gonna be my go-to now when using the glide cam and the Sony A7S II. And again, this is the Meta Bones. This isn't a speed booster. This is just the Meta Bones EF to E mount adapter. So I will use this adapter on my Sony for all my Canon lenses. Next, we have this bad boy. This is my Canon 70 to 200 f2.8 lens. This is a little more of an expensive lens. Um, comes with image stabilization as well. And this is my go-to zoom lens. This is the second version of this lens. Um, and again, really solid. The zoom is smooth. Focus ring is really smooth. Um, this has been through the ringer as well. It's a little dinged up. I've had this for about three years now. I think three years, but anyways, super durable. Great telephoto lens. Uh, one of my favorites. And again, a nice addition to all my Canon lenses that I use here. Next, I have the Zeiss Milvis 50mm f2 lens. 
Now the reason I got this lens is because it's a macro lens. So this is the Zeiss Milvis 50 millimeter macro lens. Now what the macro lens does is, if you don't know what a macro lens is, it allows you to get really close up in detail. So if you want to get details of a finger or a leaf or a bug or tree bark or sand, you can get that very, very shallow depth of field and get full focus, you know, with, with an object just in front of the lens. Um, with this lens, I'm able to focus on something about this far away, whereas any of these other lenses, you need X amount of distance um, to focus on something. So a macro lens is something always really cool. You know, you can get a close up on eyeballs or eyelashes, just get some really detailed shots. And so this is why I have this lens in particular is because it's a macro lens. And again, it's just super smooth. And the bokeh on this is really incredible as well. You can get some really detailed shots with this. It's weather sealed. You got a blue weather seal ring around it. So again, really quality lens, great for portrait photography and uh, those kind of shallow depth of field shots for video and photos. Love this lens. Next, we have my Rokinon uh, fisheye lens, just the eight, eight millimeter fisheye lens. Um, this is a very cheap and affordable fisheye lens. Um, I think it was like $300 or something around there. And uh, just again, it's a solid lens for the price. For the price, you can't beat it for the price, to be honest. And I've used this whenever I need a fisheye look. One of the most notable videos, I used it on Kyle's really, really yeah video. And we uh, achieved a cool fisheye look inside the, the white room with the, all the letters that say really yeah in there. So this was the lens we used for that. Literally a $300 lens, something like that. And incredible um, image for the price that you pay. And it's actually a pretty solid build. It's a little plasticky, but it, it still feels like, it still feels solid. It doesn't feel like if I drop it, it's just gonna shatter. So, um, solid little lens for the price here. This is my go-to fisheye. And lastly over here, we have the Sony um, 28 to 70. I think it's a F35 to 5.6. This is just a cheap little lens that I had to get when I had my cheaper underwater housing. So this underwater housing is for the Sony a7S and the only lens you can use with this housing in the Sony is this lens. So this is the reason I got this lens with this housing. This is an incredibly cheap housing for the Sony a7S. The Sony a7S with this lens and this underwater housing is a great um, pairing to get some underwater shots and take your, your camera into the water and not worry about it getting wet. So. If you're looking to do some underwater shots or do anything in the ocean or a pool, I recommend this housing um, for your Sony with this lens, but I recommend those. They're a good pairing um, to get some really affordable underwater shots. If I could only pick one of these lenses, I'd probably have to go with my 24 to 70 Canon F 2.8. Um, I love this lens, it's a beast of a lens. It's the lens I probably use most for just photography and videography. It's got a great focal range um, from 24, you can go pretty wide, then you can kind of crash into 70 and get some telephoto um, and really you know, get some nice bokeh. Um, it's an f2.8, so the f-stop, um, you know, it's not like a four. Um, it's just, you know, it's a great lens. It's really sharp, it's well built. Um, this is really my, uh, go-to lens I would have to pick if I could only select one lens out of this group but that being said if you're looking for a solid wide-angle lens I highly recommend the 17 to 40 Canon L series f4 lens the focal range is great it's from 17 to 40 like I said so you get a good amount of range you're not stuck at like 17 20 21 um, you can go wide from 17 all the way punch into 40 um, it's pretty well built for you know the price as well and it's like I said it's sh really sharp corner to corner on the lens so I think this I mean for an L series lens I think this is only like seven hundred eight hundred dollars which is a pretty good deal considering this lens is about three thousand and this one's you know I think somewhere over fifteen hundred or so so considering being an L series lens this is a great pickup and I highly recommend this lens for a wide angle lens so at the end of going over all the lenses, I did a quick little sharpness test because I was curious myself and I'm sure you guys wanted to know which out of all the lenses was the sharpest. And I found that the Canon 24-70 to and the Canon 70-200 to 
were definitely the most sharp lens, with the most sharp out of all of them being the Canon 70 to 200. That lens was significantly sharp. It was sharp even when I punched it in um, a full extra 100%. So those two lenses were definitely the sharpest. Um, I'm glad it's that way because they are definitely the most expensive lenses. Um, and then out of the two wide angles, um, the 17 to 40 and the 16 to 35, it definitely seemed like the cheaper 17 to 40 um, wide angle lens was sharper um, just by a slight hair and more so in the corners it was sharp where um, the 16 to 35 kind of fell off in the corners while this one held up a little more. So out of the two wide angle lenses, I would say the 17 to 40 was the most sharp and then the number one sharpest lens was the Canon 70 to 200 with following that the 24 to 70. So those were my notable notes as far as sharpness between the different lenses, specifically the Canon lenses. All right guys, that's it for me and this video. Hope you guys liked it, give it a thumbs up and links in the description below.